Hi, I'm Joe Bagley, and you're watching VMware Throwdown. This is where I get to ask the questions no one else dare ask, and hopefully get the answers no one else dare say. Today I'm here with Chris Wolf. He's the VP that runs the Advanced Technology Group in the office of the CTO at VMware. And his job is to look into the future and tell us what's coming next. So welcome, Chris. Thanks, Joe. Happy to be here. Okay, so today's topic, Chris, we're here to talk about modern apps and cloud native. Is this just another hype cycle? Are we just building another silo? Are we creating more legacy? Are we really going to convert everything to a whole new way of doing things? Of course not, because this is enterprise IT we're talking about. And nothing is ever that dramatic from a change perspective. But if I believe the hype, right, everything's cloud native, right? If I'm not doing cloud native, if I'm not doing containers, if I'm not doing Kubernetes, then I'm, I'm not cool. Is that true? No, not at all. I mean, our customers, as you know, solve a lot of real problems. And I'm not here to demonize because clearly cloud services and cloud native applications are a huge part of our future. They provide a breadth of agility that we just don't see in other places. But at the same time, it's not certainly all or, or nothing. So if I'm looking at the future and I'm trying to work out what's next, what do I do with my apps? What do I do with my infrastructure? Where do I even start? You, you start with one application. You start with one modernization project. You can start small, start to make one or two changes and, and slowly evolve over time, which puts the business at far less risk but also starts to move you forward. So like you, I talk to a lot of customers and occasionally I meet that one customer that says they're going all in on CloudX. Is it honestly realistic you think that you're going to get 50% of your applications converted over to run in the public cloud if you're a, a medium-sized bank in, in two years or less? No, of course not. But at the same time, if I'm that medium-sized bank and I'm not thinking this way and I'm not being proactive and I'm not being very aggressive in how I'm modernizing my application portfolio, then I'm just falling further behind my competition. You know, an example is there's some of our larger banks where they might have one to 200 IT people that are doing database as a service today. And that's just a complete ridiculous waste of resources because why do I have an IT practice that's really centered around something like database as a service when I can just consume that as a cloud service today? You have to start thinking more pragmatically about a, you know, where do you want to make those investments to further differentiate your business? And where can you just start to consume some services from the cloud? So I was chatting to a friend of mine the other day who, who's quite developer-y. And uh, he basically said to me, I don't care about your containers and your VMs and your NSXs and your securities and stuff. I just want namespaces. How do I even start with someone like that? And what do I do? But it's a fair question because at the end of the day, this is what we're building towards. Is a developer just wants a namespace. Let all of that other complexity just be masked underneath. As long as you can meet my SLAs for, for availability and performance and resiliency, then I shouldn't have to know or care about it, all of those mucky details that happen underneath. So is the future of infrastructure just racking and stacking tin and plugging it into some great big AI engine that developers talk to? Well, Joe, that's a fantastic rhetorical question, right? But at the end of the day, infrastructure is hard. When we talk about applications in a variety of applications, there's some applications that can just take advantage of a general purpose compute pool. They don't need a lot of care and feeding. Building infrastructure from individual pieces and parts is just not a good model for the, the 2020s. And now it's time for the bonus question. You look at the future. We use a light bulb as a symbol for a good idea, but that's like a 19th century technology. Shouldn't we update it with something new? And what should that be? You know, it's it's a really good question. I mean, let's look at it. Let's, let's face facts, though. When we want to save a document, we're clicking on a floppy disk icon, right? Which yeah. is something that's completely foreign to our children. So if the floppy disk can live on, you know, maybe the light bulb can live on too. Okay, Chris, thanks very much. It's been an entertaining chat. Thanks, Joe. So thank you very much.